Welcome or welcome back to the Self-Indulgent Podcast. I am your host, Mariah. Today, I was supposed to be talking about attachment styles and I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I was not feeling it. I am actually taking a course right now in attachment and I think that it's it's too much right now. Um, And I didn't want to just force the content, so it'll happen. It'll happen in the future when I'm feeling it, when it feels right. I don't want to force anything. Today, we're actually going to be talking about saying goodbye. (laughs) Really what I mean is walking away from things that are no longer serving you. It's kind of funny. It's like, I feel like between last episode, it, it all gives like themes of like letting go. So Maybe that's our first theme of our self-indulgent podcast is letting go. So how do you know when to let go? Or how can you tell that maybe this just isn't a fit anymore? This this, this doesn't work anymore. I feel like for me, there are times in my life where it's like painfully obvious and my intuition kicks in and I know that this is not for me anymore or it's just not working. It doesn't feel right let's move on. And then there are other times where like life is beating me in the head with a brick, screaming at me, and I'm just not listening. (laughs) Not listening. So it can be really hard to be aware of when to walk away from people, right? Like I think sometimes it's obvious if a habit isn't working, if a routine isn't working, it doesn't align with you. Um, But when it comes to people or even career choices, what you want to do in life, like those things can be really harder, a lot harder to identify. Like even when it's somebody I'm not super clicking with, I can typically still like see like, okay, like these are, here are some great qualities. Like this person is still a great person, right? Like, and just because somebody's not a good fit doesn't mean they're a bad person. So on the flip side of that also, you can get along with somebody and in the beginning, it's great. Things are going well, and this is any type of relationship. Things are going great. We're vibing. Things are cool. And then all of a sudden, there's like a shift. Something changes. And it can be really hard for me and I'm sure others to understand like what changed. What's the problem? What's wrong? Why aren't things working anymore? I get very, very confused and it's not fun. It's not comfortable. And to top it all off, your girl does not like confrontation. I don't like it. I don't. Which I think has kept me in situations longer, much longer than I should have been. So I've experienced this in many different ways. I actually noticed that I've put myself in situations where I actually end up around people that never really aligned with me in the first place. What do I mean by that? It's not that I'm like walking into a group of people that I know you know, aren't going to work out for me. That's usually not how it happens. So just for me, I've said it before. I love community. I love connection. I love good, authentic bonds. The feeling of finally finding my tribe. Like that is, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. It's really important to me. So with that being said, I get really excited when I meet new people and I want to connect and I want to go to all the things and talk and be able to find a place where I can authentically be myself, right? Which often leads to me oversharing. I could do a whole episode in and of itself on oversharing, (laughs) which I think can also create a false sense of community or a false sense of like that, you know, this is a good fit, right? Like so quickly. It just, it just ends up, it's almost like it can be a false sense of connection, right? Especially when there's like oversharing anxiety and things like that involved. It's almost like my openness and my desire to connect with people blinds me and like halts me from slowing down and really getting to know people. I also think that FOMO can drive this as well. Although I've gotten over that in the last year, year or two, like I, (laughs) FOMO does not get to me anymore. I don't care. (laughs) Um, and that, that definitely, that took a lot of work. Um, but it is nice to be on the other side (laughs) and there's nothing, again, there's nothing, I think FOMO is totally normal. I think it really just kind of depends on how you relate to it. What, what goes on in your head? Um, 
if you're beating yourself up about it. Um, otherwise, of course, you, you, you know, if you can't go to something you really want to go to and, you know, people you care about are going, yeah, of course that, that feeling sucks. Um, so yes, I do want to normalize FOMO, but there is the type of FOMO where I think it's less about that. And there's this ego side to like, uh, they're doing all these things without me and they're going to, they're going to, this is going to change things. Like, I think that FOMO can have a, another side to it that gets a little too deep. Anyway, to continue. So with that being said, like getting really involved in new relationships and like meeting people and wanting to connect, I find that over time I realize that the novelty starts to wear off, right? And then I'm starting to see things or realize things in a way that maybe this person isn't meant to be in my life in a permanent way. Because it's not that anybody's a bad person, like I said before, or I hate them. Sometimes it's just really not a good fit. And honestly, some people don't deserve to know certain things about you. And I think that when we rush things and things are feeling good and all that stuff, like I think it kind of leaves us in a vulnerable, vulnerable space rather than like slowing down, taking your time, figuring out what your boundaries are. And so that, you know, we can move into the something slowly, right? Because I think, you know, as we're getting, as I'm getting older, I want to be very, very intentional about who is in my inner circle. And there are multiple types of circles, right? Like I have an inner circle, but that doesn't mean that I have other circles. It doesn't mean that everybody that I talk to, um, who I'm going to continue to talk to has to be this like super bestie for life like that's not what I'm saying but once I'm in a place where I'm starting to realize okay maybe we actually don't fit that part is awkward that part's hard because um there's an energy shift right and because there's this energy shift and I'm my energy is very strong people can definitely feel my energy and I can feel theirs I'm, I'm very sensitive to energy um, I think that that's very obvious because I'm going from this saying yes to everything like, oh, yes, 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 I'll do this, I'll do that, let's do this, like this high energy to like a lower energy of like, I'm not saying yes as much, like I'm reprioritizing, I'm, you know, kind of give, pulling some of my energy back for myself and people can feel that, I'm sure. But all of just all of that to say, it's just showed me that we really have to be more selective on who we get really close to um, and it's okay to take things slow. And a side note, it's okay to have different friends or people, different people in your life for different purposes. Um, there are different types of friends, right? My best friend actually taught me this, like, it's okay to just have like, a, like a work friend, right? Like, and it stays in that box or to have just like a school friend or, you have your friends that you talk to every single day and then you have friends that you know you you talk to every other month maybe you see them once a year but it's like you never stop talking and i think that that's okay i think different people can fill different cups and that's fine so with that being said you know it's not just new people you meet right like this this isn't you're not just letting go of new people you meet or saying oh yeah this like relationship isn't serving me just for the new people you meet like this also includes people that have probably already been in your life so it's the balance of like how do i figure out if this new person is okay to bring in in a bigger way and then also, how do I walk away from those who are already in my life in either whether it be small or um, big ways? So I have some signs. For me, in my experience, some signs of maybe it's time to walk away or, you know, just change the amount of energy or and effort you're putting into something at the end of the day it's about you and what you need to prioritize and what's good for you and that can be really hard and uncomfortable it can be really really hard and uncomfortable believe me i know i know i'm aware disclaimer to just take this with a disclaimer to take this with a grain of salt these are some things that after reflecting when it was fi when it finally ended like some of the things that maybe showed me that hey like maybe you need to reevaluate you know this this relationship so i think a big one is that 
And this probably will happen with longer term people is that when your values and your beliefs don't align, and here's the thing, right? You can 100% have val- great relationships with people who don't have the same values and beliefs as you. That's not really what I'm saying. But when things are like, when everything is completely opposite, right? It can start to get a little uncomfy. Things can start to be a little like, hmm. Because for example, right? If somebody has a completely different value system from you or belief system from you, it it's going, it may make the way you guys communicate very different or the way that they just speak to you, um, the way they move through life, right? Like I think as we get older, people's values and beliefs do change. So I think it's really important to be aware of that. And to when you're having, when you're starting to get frustrated with somebody or, you know, you're having more tiffs, like, I think it's worth evaluating whether or not, okay, what is the, uh, what's the underlying thing happening here? Especially if you've tried to explain something more than once and the other person is not getting it, or they keep doing the same thing. Like we have to start to think, okay, is this just like part of like, who they are um and is is it something that i can continue to deal with like is that the type of energy that i or the the type the way of thinking that i want to be around essentially i do also think that this one is actually extremely hard to identify when it's like a mismatch in this way because we don't just go around (laughs) announcing our values and beliefs honestly Some of us probably aren't even fully aware of what our actual values and beliefs are at the core of it, but it comes out in the way that we do things, the way we behave, the way we speak, you know, just the way we exist, right? Um, So actually getting super clear on that can be helpful. So you might just, if it's that type of issue, you may feel like something's not right, right? Like, but you can't really pinpoint it but things really just aren't sitting right with you. You're not really liking how maybe the person is moving. It could just be something like that. So my next one actually kind of reminds me of values and just like changing in values and beliefs, which is like the you've grown apart. (laughs) This one is interesting. And it's also, I don't think it's as hard to identify, but I do think it is a tough pill to swallow. I think it's rough, especially, um, I think that you can have a lot of love for people who you grow apart from and it can suck to have to walk away, especially, you know, if you have great memories, great time. And it's not to say like, I'm also not telling you to cut anybody out of your life either. I'm just saying, again, you know, this is all about reprioritizing and figuring out what relationships really align and serve you. You know, as I've gotten older and in my mid twenties now, I don't have time. I don't have time. So I really need to be very intentional about who gets my time, (laughs) the negative time that I have. But yes, the growing apart thing, especially with certain longer term relationships is inevitable. Like you're gonna have, there are going to be some people in your life that you grow apart from. Once we're out in the real world, right? Out of high school, out of college, you know, I think we're more susceptible to this growing apart thing because we're out in the real world. We're experiencing things separately now, right? We're going down our own paths and there are different things influencing us now. We were, you know, you can't be around somebody 24 seven. That's why you can also grow apart from your partner because you're not with them attached to the hip 24 seven. You are being influenced by the things in the media, your job, the people you're around. Like it can, there's so many things. And if you guys aren't communicating and talking, right? And catching up as often, it can be really hard to bridge a gap because the longer you kind of go without coming together and maybe updating each other, like the bridge is just going to grow longer, right? The gap is going to become bigger. And then before you know it, you both are different people and you can still be friends. It can still work. But I think if somebody is holding you back or if you can't relate and you have nothing to talk about anymore, and it's it's not the same and you know i okay so another thing i don't 
like I don't think that relationships should necessarily be transactional right however with the whole thing like I said with time right like I don't have all the time in the world anymore so I want to be in relationships that are a give and receive I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm give 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 I'm bringing the conversation I'm bringing the energy. I, I, I don't want it. I can't have it be one sided in that way. And sometimes a sign of so those things can lead to like, there's been this growth apart, you don't get me anymore. Like I'm having to create the conversation or constantly explain things or thing those types of things like we're just not in the same world anymore. It's just different. So and again, there's no bad blood. I think that's what's weird about this conversation is that none of this means that there's bad blood. Now there can be bad blood. I'm not saying there can't be bad blood. I definitely think you should cut out the people <laughs> who are harmful to you, right? But I don't think we should always wait until we've been harmed to walk away from others. I think that's my big point about all of this. It's hard, it's hard to talk about because for me anyway, I haven't walked away from people until I've been really hurt by them or stuff hits the fan. And I want to be intentional about who I bring in and then also be taking inventory and checking up on the people who ha have already been in, right? Like, because we don't need to let it get to a horrible point. And it's not that I'm paranoid or I'm cutting people out preemptively, right? Like I'm not preemptively striking them out of my life, but I'm being very aware of where my energy is going. And you really know it's not a good fit anymore if they're hitting you with that, that you've changed stuff. I don't wanna hear it. That to me is a red flag when it's meant in a condescending way, right? I think you've changed can be a compliment because I didn't want to stay in the same in the first place. Who told you that that was ever part of the plan? <laughs> but yeah, I think <laughs> that's something to be very aware of when you grow apart and the people who are holding that against you, which kind of leads me to my next one, um, feeling like you can't be yourself. Um, this is interesting because this can be with new people, old people, current people, whatever, like, if you feel like you can't be yourself, that, I mean, that's a red flag. And that's something inside telling you, like, there's a reason I can't be my full self. Um, and I think this one is actually really hard or it can really can really be hard to identify when it's like hey like I can't be myself around this person and the reason I say it's hard to identify especially for my people of color is because of things like code switching like we like it's our some of that stuff is already ingrained because of the system and our public schools and the way we're taught to act like there's already like this innate sense of you can't be yourself um from childhood so whether it be from your parents like it can it come it's literally from birth where it's like we're being censored um and controlled if you're already used to that and you kind of even got used to that feeling it can be hard to identify in the people who you're close to like you're used to it this is normal oh yeah mm. I maybe maybe I, I should, probably shouldn't really do this around this person because da, da, da. no no I was trying not to yell into the mic <laughs> but no no and you know I'm not saying like to uncensor yourself everywhere right but the people you're closest to the people in your circle the people who you're supposed to feel good with I don't know I, I don't I don't I don't want to feel like that I don't want to feel like that and Again, it can be hard to identify that that's what the problem is. Like, wow, you know what you know what it is? And the reason, like, I actually can't be myself with you. Like, that is, I think, hard to identify sometimes. And then sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's like, see, I can never whatever with you. So I think, I think that's a, that's, that's exhausting, right? It's like, like code switching is exhausting, right? So if you can't even be your authentic self with the, the, the people who you're supposed to be comfortable with, it's just like, why, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? That's a lot of energy. 
that you're giving for people who you feel like you can't even be yourself around. So that's why it's so, so important to have a strong relationship with yourself so that you can build like a strong muscle for what you will and will not tolerate and just a stronger intuition, self-awareness, right? So that you can piece apart some of the other noise that makes it hard to figure out what is for you and what's not for you. So aside from just like that piece, right? Like the people who you feel like you can't be yourself around, it could also actually mean that you have some inner work to do. Maybe that person is triggering something in you that you haven't dealt with yet that makes you feel self-conscious. And that's why the self-awareness piece is important because maybe it is that, you know, this person triggers and brings something out in you that you haven't yet dealt with and I, that's still important information to know and that maybe you have some things to figure out before you can really fully exist in that relationship right so you see how nuanced all this stuff is like it's not as simple as like screw them like i mean it, it, their the relationships are so dynamic like there's so much going on there or the person's really just not for you and that's okay too because if you're getting to a point where you're feeling like you have to constantly defend or explain yourself, then it really may not be worth it. I've been there. I've done that. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I'm not constantly explaining and defending myself to people. I'm not, I shouldn't, I don't want to have to do that with the people closest to me because if they know me, then it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that hard. Like, yes, relationships are hard and there's always going to be things to grow, places to grow, things to work out and stuff like that. But there's a limit. You just got to find your limits. So if you find yourself constantly defending yourself, right? Or constantly, there's constantly conflicts, right? And there's a disagreement and you're trying to have a productive conversation. Like you're trying to talk, let's talk about this, what's going on, right? And it feels like you're constantly on the defense and they're on the offense. Like you're wrong. You're... No, like that, it should never feel like you're on defense, they're on offense. Like this is, this should be a conversation about what's happening, right? Like what's going on, right? Because there's three sides to every story, which kind of brings me to this next point of like, you know, be mindful of people who cannot take accountability for their roles in some things, in the mishaps that happen, right? Like the, mis the, the, the conflicts, the disagreements, right? Like people who can't, take accountability because people are going to make mistakes and I'll talk about that more later people are going to make mistakes and that's okay but if if they can't take any accountability for anything ever and how things go down that's a problem because there are always three sides to a story which means there are some truth to what you're saying to what they're saying and then there's really what happened right because we're all coming to it with our own baggage with our own um problems our own insecurities right so that speaks to like how we interact with people and miscommunications and things happen so if it's you constantly saying okay yes i did this and i apologize for it i recognize this and they're not doing that too. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's also exhausting. <laughs> That's there's no. Mm -mm. That's all I have to say. Mm -mm. <laughs> I am at a point in my life where I can admit to my mistakes and my faults, and I and I try to like analyze it. Like I really try to to figure that out because again, it takes you know two to tangle. So I need to. I want to be able to be able to see where I can improve or where maybe my thinking was off, right? So for me, I'm just, just, just for me, one thing that I have personally is I don't wanna be close with people who are not self-aware. That's like a big thing for me right now and where I'm at in life. I do not, I don't wanna be around people who are not self-aware um, and in a close relationship anyway, like, I, it drives me nuts, um, especially when I'm like trying so hard to do their, all this work. Um, and of course you can't force work on people, right? Like the healing journey and, and trying to, you know, do better and, um, you know, continue breaking through these generational 
barriers and generational traumas. Not everybody's going to do that and that's fine. But I'm just at a place right now where I can't deal with like zero level of self-awareness. I, I can't work with that. That's very hard for me to work with. So that's just something that I, I don't, people, I can't get too close to people like that. I think we all should be self-aware to an extent. I think it's really important to be self-aware. And it's so interesting because the people that I have interacted with who don't want to be take accountability or don't want to be self-aware they've often like come off as self-righteous and will not give grace like it's so interesting because not only will they re not recognize kind of their part in thing things they also will like hold you to a crazy high standard and not give you any grace like once you if you've made a mistake that's it you're the problem you're wrong like mm -mm, i don't i can't it, it's that's <laughs> that's too much for me that's my boundary <laughs> is that i'm i'm i surround myself with people who have some self-awareness that's 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 what i'm speaking into the universe Be it's especially and i want to talk about the not giving you grace piece i think you know pay attention who to the people who are not going to give you grace i'm in, like we're adults, like well, maybe not all of us listening are adults. If you're not an adult, if you're under 18, hey. <laughs> um, but I think just so you know, <laughs> in adulthood, young adulthood, adulthood, I feel like we're doing adult things. The world is crazy. We're busy. And if you cannot extend grace to people, that's not right. It's not right. Everybody has their stuff. And if people have a problem with you saying no, are you making a mistake and they're never going to let you live it down? It's not worth it. That's too, there's too much stuff going on for me to be reminded all the time about how I messed up. We're human. And if we want long lasting relationships, unfortunately, guys, we're all going to mess up. We are all going to mess up. There's no way you're having a 10 plus year relationship with someone a five plus year relationship with somebody romantic or not just in your life and you're not going to make a mistake here and then you're not going to tick each other off here and then so we got to be realistic right now i'm not saying let everything slide i'm deaf that's definitely not what i'm saying otherwise this episode wouldn't even exist <laughs> if i was saying let everything slide there is a line and that is up to you to determine what your line and limits are. So, you know, if you, if somebody's getting on you for being late occasionally or canceling things sometimes or, you know, making, just make, constantly making a fuss, you're the problem and just making you feel bad, then maybe that's not the energy you need in your life right now, especially if your life is hard. And that's part of the reason why, you know, you're missing things or you're canceling things um, where you can't be there um, the way that they want you to be there. You know, especially if your intention is never to hurt, right? Like if your intention wasn't to disappoint and hurt them, then, you know, I would hope that there's, you know, some grace being given there. Okay, next. I think it's very important to be aware of people who may be trying to hold you back. And this kind of relates to my growing apart piece. Um, and the, you know, you've changed piece. I think also there can be a piece of holding you back from change or trying to stop the change really, maybe even before it happens. So this could look like, so say you have this new idea or there's this new area that you're really interested in or just something new you want to do, right? And they're clowning you for it, or they just have a lot of opinions about it, or they're being super negative about it, especially when you know you're trying, you're, you know, elevating or at least trying to elevate. That's, that's a, that's a red flag. Ah, that's not good energy. This can get really hard if it's somebody who you've really like been close to long-term. Um, and that speaks to, you know, the growing apart piece that it's just hard there when change, you know, it's like, change is this vehicle and it's like either people are going to get in the car with you or they're going to stay and wait for the bus like I, there it is that's kind of just what it is um you'll determine who can be there for the ride you know it's 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 their problem um in situations like that you know it can be really frustrating and disappointing if somebody's kind of holding you back from something especially if you have a lot of care for them but you have to remember that that's their problem they have their own stuff going on um 
you know it may not even be intentional that they're like or super conscious that they're like nah um I don't want them to succeed it's not always like that so it can be rough um but just know that it has everything to do with them it has nothing to do with you and you should definitely do the things that make you feel good and like constructive and just know like constructive criticism is healthy like that's great but you know pay attention to the people who only criticize right like i think there's a good balance between criticism constru- i mean crit- constructive criticism and also offering some advice offering you know some suggestions with that criticism not just like completely bombing your idea i'm trying to keep the podcast not explicit Next is the big word of 2020 to probably today, 2023, gaslighting. Now, (laughs) I know we're tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing it. It's all over social media. People use it wrong. Same thing with the word boundaries. People use that wrong too. But for gaslighting, I have a definition for you. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which the abuser attempts to sow self-doubt and confusion in their victims' minds. So it originated, it comes from like domestic violence, it's a term, um, and a form of mental abuse. But I do think the gist of like psychological manipulation to kind of create self-doubt in somebody else, like I do think that that exists in, um, outside of the world of domestic violence, right? Um, So I'm going to talk about psychological manipulation (laughs) to make you feel self-doubt. Like Shaggy said, honey came in (laughs) and she caught me red-handed sleeping with the girl next door. And that man continued to say, it wasn't me. That is going to be how I'm talking (laughs) about gaslighting because that is gaslighting. If you are talking to somebody or you are dealing with a situation and you are verbally or in your head asking yourself, am I tripping? Like really starting to question if you're tripping, you may be getting gaslit. I'm just, it, it, you, be careful. Please be careful. Maybe we should reevaluate what's going on if you have to ask yourself, are you, are you tripping? Are you on something? Like for me, like, Honestly, when I've been in situations with people, and I'm not saying it's, it may not even be intentional. That's the crazy part from the other person. But I've been in situations where like, I'm having a conversation, you know, trying to resolve a conflict and it's just not going well. And it's, I'm almost like, I'm laughing. Like, I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm actually getting confused about what's being talked about anymore. Like, and I'm pretty good at having conversations I think so like if I'm at a state of like what is what am am I in the twilight zone what is going on what are we talking about if I no longer know what we're talking about red flag maybe it's not gasoline but that's just something to keep note it should not feel like you're doing mental gymnastics when you are trying to resolve conflict with somebody it really is not mm -mm. my I'm it's not about who has the strongest brain this no that for me is a sign that that for me is a sign and then on the flip side of this you may have people who actually have no there's no confrontation right like there's so there's no conflict um they just start acting different or they're constantly hot and cold with you and it feels like nothing you can't you you don't even know nothing precipitated it right like you can't sit in your mind and think oh oh, they're mad because I did this. Like if you, you can't even come up with something like that's another thing. That's like, I don't got, I don't have the time or energy for that. If there's a problem, you need to tell me there's a problem. Okay. But I think depending on how you feel, this is another situation that causes nuance, depending how you feel about the person, it may be worth double checking and saying, Hey, are we good? But if they proceed to say, yeah, we're fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm cool. And you know, you feel the, you feel the cold air, you see the snowflakes. No, then, then, all right, you tried, right? You tried. And so I could, of course, so my next one, of course, I think is pretty, pretty obvious is like people who can't handle your nose. This is hard because I actually think that this is the most common in family, um, which sucks. And I'm not going to tell you how to handle that. Your family is your business. 
but know that you are a person and you have your life and you deserve to say no. It's okay to say no, right? Especially if you're somebody who is always saying yes. It is okay to say no sometimes. And if they love you, they gonna get over it. So this list can go on and on. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> I really just wanted to highlight some of the things that, you know, through my experience, I've noticed and how I've been able to kind of figure out if like a relationship is serving me anymore, right? Um, and not to say I've completely cut people out um, who kind of fall in some of these categories, but just that, you know, I've reevaluated my time and energy and I'm moving accordingly. And I just want to say again that there's nuance to all of this, right? I'm not a perfect person. None of us are, but I'm getting better and better at identifying what I do and don't want in my life, in my bubble. But there are always ways, there are always ways in which we contribute to cycles and that I contribute to cycles and the situations that I find myself in, right? Like I contribute to it too. It's really, and I can't stress this enough, it's up to you to determine what your limits are. Also a little, <laughs> if you want to test some things out, <laughs> a tool that I love to use now, if you're on social media, is that mute button. Muting people's profiles. If you want to test out, if you're not sure about if somebody, you know, seeing somebody, somebody, you're not sure about somebody, you mute their profile. You don't got to see them for some time. That's my new favorite button. That is my new favorite thing. And I think that's just good practice in general. Like it's not to say that you hate anybody or anything like that. Sometimes you just, there are certain things that right now may not be great for your mental health to see, or, you know, like if you're in a really dark spot and everybody's having these amazing vacations and it's like, it's just not good for your mental health right now, mute them, mute them. Cause you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes things aren't so deep that you need to unfollow, right? Or you need to block somebody. You don't, right? Like there's no bad blood, but you know, that's, that's what the mute button's there for. Anyway, that was kind of off topic, but you do with that with what you will. Okay, friends, this brings us to the end and I have our weekly journal prompt. And if you don't want to journal and write, at least reflect on this a little bit, please. Okay, here we go. What kinds of people do you want to surround yourself with? What traits do they have? What does your relationship with that person look like or those people look like? What does that community look like for you? Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please download the episode, rate the episode, leave a comment, follow. Go to the socials, do all the things. It helps more than you know. And have another blessed and intentional week. Bye.